All right, I'm Steven from Rugged Routes, and today we're back for another Lowrance tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about expanding your NEMA 2000 network. Well, what the heck is NEMA 2000? Uh, if you've run a point one antenna connected to your GPS, and the point one antenna is the, the white puck that you see on the top of a lot of race cars, uh, represented in this diagram uh, by item letter D, uh, that is on the NEMA 2000 network. And NEMA 2000 is basically a way to add multiple accessories to the Lowrance GPS system. Now, I've come to realize recently that a lot of people think that you go through and set up, you know, this additional power cable and these T's and all this stuff just to add this one device. But it's actually the foundation for you to be able to add multiple devices. So if you're just running an external antenna by itself and are not running like a belt temp sensor or any other NEMA 2000 devices, then it might seem a little overkill, but I promise you there's a method to the madness. Now, what actually happens here is the GPS itself has its own power cable, which is not pictured here. So that power cable powers the GPS itself but does not the gps does not provide power to the rest of the items plugged into the nema 2000 connection now all of the nema 2000 accessories that connect to the nema 2000 bus typically have their power sourced from this power adapter here so this is going to be like any of your sensors the trail mark belt temp sensor point one external antenna low power additional devices like that all get their power from this power adapter uh, right over here on the bottom left side. So as you expand the network out, it actually becomes really convenient from a wiring perspective because then all you need to do is come in here and add another one of these T connectors, these letter H items, and then you just split off another device. So if you want to add multiple devices, you just add another T connector right here in between these two T's and you'll have another connection to add, let's say a belt temp sensor or like the trail mark that's coming out or the engine adapter, right? You could just T off of this. It's with a single cable and that connects your data and your power for these small devices. So it's actually really, really convenient. Now, another misconception that I've realized a lot recently is that as people have been hooking these NEMA 2000 networks up for the first time, there's been this understanding or misunderstanding really that all of these T's have to be connected directly together, which is not the case at all. You can actually spread these out really, really far uh, and then T off, let's say on the other end of a car. So instead of having all these T connectors crammed up behind your dash and running a cord, a NEMA 2000 extension cord all the way back to the back of your car for each device, what you can then do is put an extension in between these T's and have some T's, let's say at the back of your car and some T's at the front of your car. And it makes the wiring a whole lot easier. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go take a look at the KRX. All right, so we're here at the KRX. Everything's kind of torn apart but I will show you guys really quick how the NEMA 2000 network is set up in this car. So off to the left, just like in the diagram in the computer, we have the power adapter coming in to the side of our first T. We're gonna have a cable that comes off of this, goes to the GPS. Then we've got a cable coming off of here that's gonna go down to the trail mark. I'm actually gonna add a third T in here. That way that can go down to a Naviop digital switching box to control our lights through the Lowrance. And instead of capping it off here with the terminating resistor, we're adding a cable here that goes to the back of the car. And I do it this way, that way if we have to add more accessories in the back of the car, we don't have to have a cable for every accessory. And it'll make more sense in a second. So check this out. I ran that cable to the wheel well down here up the wheel well and now we have a few more T connections right in here. 
So this one goes down to the belt temp sensor and the like the clutch cover. This one goes up to the 0.1 external GPS antenna. And then on the end of that T, it's kind of hard to see in there, but there's the terminating resistor at the back of the car. So there is going to be more accessories I'm going to add to the back of the car later. So when that time comes, I'll be able to just add another T in here and move the terminating resistor to the end of the next one. So the expandability with setting it up this way becomes extremely convenient. So I hope that makes sense, but we'll go over it again in the computer. So we'll jump back into this diagram here real quick and we'll expand it in a second. So what I'm trying to explain is all of your T connectors don't have to be directly connected to each other. You can actually separate them with a cable in between. So let's take a look at a more elaborate NEMA 2000 setup that more resembles what I've got going on in the car I just showed you. So we've got a number of additional devices in here, but it's all the same concept. All we did was add more T connectors and an extension cable that goes to the back of the car. So these three T's represent the ones that are going to be up behind the dash that will provide a connection to the GPS, the Naviop Loop S switching system, which will allow us to control our 12 volt accessories through the touchscreen of the Lowrance. Then this T is going to go to the trail mark, which will allow us to take pre-running notes uh, for race courses. And then we have this long extension cable that goes to the back of the car, which then connects to two more T's, one for a 0.1 external antenna and the other for the infrared belt temp sensor. And then of course, at the very end, we have to have the terminating resistor, which looks like, like a plastic cap. And I've talked to a lot of people over the years that leave that out and then they have problems with either the 0.1 or the belt temp sensor not realizing that it's not just a dust cap. There is actually a 120 ohm resistor in there that is required to make this data bus work properly. So it's very important that you leave that terminating resistor out on the very end of the network. So there you have it. This is a, a proper network as long as your T's are connected end to end, even if there's an extension in there. However, you do not want to add another T off the center connection of a T. So once you start doing that, things get really weird electrically and you'll start having all sorts of problems. So just make sure that only a single device is connected off the center connection of a T and off the side of the T's, you only have other T's, extensions or the terminating resistor. I hope that all makes sense to you guys as you start to get more accessories to build out your networks and as I start releasing more accessories to warrant the knowledge of how this even works. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helps. Um, make sure to subscribe because we got more stuff coming up and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.